All right, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. This is going to be part two of Famine. Uh, my computer's been doing weird, weird things. So when I notice the volume isn't very good, sometimes I have to restart things. So that's why I made this a part two. I didn't really want to, but yeah, sometimes you got to do what a, somebody's got to do. All right, uh, we're going to study Elijah. I did a hour and 45 minute Bible study on Elijah, E-L-I-J-A-H. He was my favorite prophet of the Old Testament. That guy, he was something. And he's going to come back one day. Uh, maybe soon, maybe later, I don't know. All right, uh, so if you're interested, you could go to my... Um, on my channel, you can do the search and you could type in Elijah, E-L-I-J-A-H. And, um, and listen to the study. He was interesting. In 1 Kings 16 and verse 30, we read the following. And Ahab, now Ahab was the king of Israel. Now, Israel and Judah were divided at this point. Israel had a king, Judah had a king, and Ahab was the king of Israel, and not a very good king either. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil, E-V-I-L, evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. Did you catch that? And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord, above all that were before him. Doesn't sound like a good guy, huh? No. So keep that in mind. All right, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab. So here it is. God's prophet is talking unto this wicked king. As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Now, do you know that this is going to be the same thing in the end times? Yeah. You know, God likes to give you, you know, lays the foundation and then tells you what's going to happen, but he compares it to the what had already happened. Besides, God's God doesn't do things, you know, much differently. I mean, you know, he has a way of doing things. God is a God of order. Satan is the God of this world of chaos. So, and Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, wicked Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Well, guess what happens when you don't have any rain? You don't have any crops. You don't have any food. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens, to feed thee there. Huh. So, Elijah's going to have water, and he's going to have ravens bringing him breakfast and dinner, I guess. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the bravens, ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. You know what? Jesus mentioned this very event. And we're going to, hopefully I'll remember to cover that. So God commanded a widow woman to uh, help Elijah. 
So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise, and behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. In other words, the food's almost all gone. She's got a little bit left. She's like, yeah, we're going to eat this last bit of food we got, and then we're going to die of starvation. But God and Elijah have other plans. Verse 13. And Elijah said unto her, said unto her, Fear not, go and do, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Huh. How do you like that? God multiplied the food. Isn't that what Jesus did with the, the multitudes? He took the barley loaf and, and the couple of small fishes and fed thousands. He did it at least twice. At least twice. Yeah, famine in the land, but not for those that obey the Lord and believe him. And check this out. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. He quit breathing. He died. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him up out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow upon whom I sojourned by slaying her son? Now think about this. In a modern church today, if Elijah came and was living with a widow and her son, Boy, what a bunch of rumors there'd be. Ooh, what's, what's, that, what's that Elijah, so-called self-prophet of God, doing living with a widow? Yeah, what are they doing in the middle of the night? Hmm? Boy, you'd hear all kinds of rumors, huh? And the, he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son, and he stretched himself upon the child three times, one for the father, one for the son, and one for the Holy Spirit, right? Maybe. And cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber, into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is true. Amen to that, huh? All right, what happens to a rebellious people? Ezekiel chapter 5, uh, verse 15. Let's take a look. So shall it be a reproach and an 
and a taunt, an instruction and an astonishment unto the nations that are round about thee, when I shall execute judgments in thee in anger and in fury and in furious rebukes. I, the Lord, have spoken it. When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine. God's going to send the evil arrows of famine. When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, and I will increase the famine upon you, and will break your staff of bread, so will I send upon you famine and evil beasts. Four-legged beasts or two-legged beasts. Anybody been to a big city lately? But I digress. So will I send upon you famine and evil beasts, and they shall bereave thee, and pestilence and blood shall pass through thee, and I will bring the sword upon thee. I, the Lord, have spoken it. All right, let's take a look in the book of Amos, chapter 8, and verse 1. Thus hath the Lord God showed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord unto me, the end is come upon my people of Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. And the songs of the temple shall be howlings in that day, saith the Lord God. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail, saying, When shall the new moon be gone that we may sell corn, and the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit? You see, they were cheating the people. And they didn't really care about the Sabbath. You know, they were just, you know, they, they were more worried about making money than they were honoring the Lord. So, verse 6. That we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of shoes, yea, and sell the refuse of the wheat. The Lord hath spoken by the excellency of Jacob. Surely I will never forget any of their works. Shall not the land tremble for this, and every one mourn that dwelleth therein? And it shall rise up wholly as a flood, and it shall be cast out and drowned as by the flood of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. Didn't the Lord say that... Uh, There'd be darkness just before the day of the Lord. But that's another different study altogether. And he did. It shall come to pass in that day. What day? The day of the Lord. The day of Christ. Which I say is the same day. Because I say Jesus Christ is Lord. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. And I will turn your feasts into mourning, and all your songs into lamentations. And I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins, and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the morning of an only son, and the end thereof as a bitter day. Listen carefully. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land. Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Did you catch that? Not a famine of bread, 
not a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And people, I tell you what, I think it's here today. I mean, here it is in the, the land of America and Europe, the places that built churches to honor Jesus Christ, that printed Bibles, that sent missionaries all over the world. You can hardly even hear the words of the Lord anymore. Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. They that swear by the sin of Samaria. What was Samaria? King Ahab. That was his capital. Remember the evil King Ahab? That was his capital. Not Jerusalem. Samaria. They that swear by the sin of Samaria and say, Thy God, O Dan, liveth, and the manner of Beersheba liveth, even they shall fall and never rise up again. Jesus warned in Matthew 24 and in Mark 13, For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. You see, the disciples asked Jesus, What shall it be the sign of thy coming? And he told them, There would be wars, earthquakes, famines, troubles, pestilences. And that's, that's it, people. That's the, and he says, That's the beginning of the sorrows. Matter of fact, when the Lord gets pretty much uh, halfway through his judgments, his vials, his seals, his uh, the, the trumpets and all that stuff. By the time they get to the third, fourth, and fifth, sixth one, look out. <laughs> These are going to be called the good old days. Oh, yeah. All right, let's take a look at Luke chapter 4. Let's listen to some words of Jesus. Uh, let's see, verse 14, Luke 4 and verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, uh, that's Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And that's what Jesus did. He took many blind people and gave, their, gave them sight. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And the answer to that is no. And he said unto them, Ye shall surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever ye have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted 
in his own country. You know, this is why in the army, officers that give orders to the enlisted men are not to fraternize or mingle with the enlisted men because there's a saying that familiarity breeds contempt. You know, you'll, they just, you know, everybody that knew Jesus growing up, they thought, this guy's no better than me. They were wrong. But, uh, you know, that's, that's the thing, you know. No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias. That's Elijah. That's the Greek rendering of the word Elijah. When the heavens were shut up three years and six months. That's the time of the, tri the, the tribulation, people. When things get really bad. When the heavens were shut up three years and six months, when the great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Eliasus, the prophet, and none of them was clay, cleansed, saving Naaman, the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. See, instead of repenting and believing Jesus, they got angry. And rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him unto the brow of the hill, whereupon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them, went his way, and came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. Now, didn't we just read the story of how Elijah went to the widow woman? And she had a little bit of meal and a little bit of oil and a little bit of water and it never failed. So, all right, let's take a look. All right, let's take a look. Luke chapter 15 and verse 11. Jesus is going to talk to about a parable. And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give to me the portion of goods that follow to me. And he divideth unto him his living. He's saying, you know, give me my inheritance. I want it now. I don't want to wait for you to die. I, I want my stuff now. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. Now, if you ask me, this younger son is indicative of northern Israel. That's what northern Israel did. They took all the blessings the Lord gave them and they wasted it away. And when he spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want. So is this just a physical famine or a spiritual famine or both? You know, this guy went and, you know, Israel went and spent all his money on whores and, you know, eat, drink, and be merry, you know, for tomorrow we die. And that's in the Bible, by the way. So, uh, cast away all, all the good things that the Lord gave the son. Cast it all away, giving it to whores. And when he had spent all... There arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. He was hungry. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. 
you know, pigs are unclean, right? And he would have fain, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. So here it is, the pigs got more food to eat than he does. And when he came to himself, you know, he finally came to his senses, right? And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? Boy, what an idiot I am. I mean, here it is, I'm feeding pigs, and they're eating better than I do. I'm going to go back home. Things were better for me at home than, you know... I, Grass always looks greener on the other side, right? I will arise and go to my father and say unto him, Father, I have sinned. Isn't that what the Lord wants to hear us say? Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Here it is. This guy didn't even have shoes. You talk about being poor. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. And people, I think this is representative of the marriage supper of the Lamb. God's going to give us, cast off these, this filthiness of the flesh, give us white robes of righteousness, and the fatted calf, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. Yeah, marriage supper of the lamb, people. For this my son was dead. We were. We were dead in in, in sin and death. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And that's only in Christ. And they began to be merry. And this is, this is Israel, people. Israel fell away, didn't they? Now his elder son was in the field. Well, this is Judah. Judah was the elder son. You know, he didn't leave the father. He's in the field working. But Israel ran off. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. In other words, what, what in the world is going on? I'm out here working, and there's music and dancing and party, and what, what in the world is going on? And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, the older brother, Judah, and he was angry and would not go in. And therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, that's whores, people, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he, the father, said unto him, Son, Thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead, and is alive again, and was lost, 
and is found. In Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 6, G, uh, the prophet says, My people hath been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to mountain. They have forgotten their resting place. And after all, why did Jesus come? Matthew 18, 11. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. And Israel was lost. In 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 3, Paul writes, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Luke 19, 10. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. All right, I know we just read this yesterday. Well, those of you that were listening to my study yesterday. Revelation 18, verse 1. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her a double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God. Who judgeth her. All right, now, got one more little thing here. All right, turn to Romans chapter 8, and I think we're going to close this out. Romans chapter 8, we'll start in verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Boy, that's the truth. But the Spirit itself maketh us intercession for, th which, for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Because he maketh intercession for the spirits according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Can you believe that? You know, people, I, I had a, an accident, an auto accident. I had three of the top uh, orthopedic surgeons in the county that I live in, South Florida, and all three of them said, you'll never walk unassisted again. All three of them. And I wasn't a believer. And I thought, great, I'm going to be a cripple for the rest of my life. But the Lord had other ideas. But because of that, I came back to the Lord. Because I was dying. Not from the, the accident, but from complications from the accident. Long story. People have asked me to do a, a testimony, but you know what? It's not about me. 
It's about what Christ did for all of us. But because of that, I found the Lord in a doctor's office, dying. Because a couple put up with me. Because I was a, a, a hardened, God-hating atheist, I guess you could say. I don't know. I mean, praise the Lord. I, I love those people, and I... You know, they they were elderly then. They're I'm sure they're gone to be with the Lord now, but uh, they put up with me. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose, for whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If he spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Can you imagine that? Jesus was God, he became a man, and suffered horrible things just to prove to us his love, to fulfill his own law, his own ways, his own word. And these, these atheist people think that they're going to stand before the Lord with belligerence and think they're going to get away with anything? I don't think so. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10 real quick, and we're going to go back to Romans. Hebrews 10, verse 27. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation. Do you know what indignation is? That's extreme hatred. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much more sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and have done despite unto the Spirit of grace. That don't sound good, people. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance, vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Hmm. All right, back to Romans 8, 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. <laughs> Can you imagine that? If, God's, if God the Father is the judge, you've got his son as your attorney, making intercession for us. How would you, <laughs> I mean, what can go wrong, right? Verse 35, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, that's trouble, shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him 
that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Well, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries, and John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. And this is the end of part two of the famine, the conclusion. Amen.